from New York City, it's The Cube, covering New Relic Future Stack 2019. Brought to you by New Relic. Hi, I'm Stu Miniman, and this is The Cube's exclusive coverage of New Relic Future Stack. 2019, we're here at the Grand Hyatt, which is right next to Grand Central Station in beautiful Manhattan, New York City. We're going to be speaking with a number of customers as well as the executives. It's the seventh year of the show, our first year here, and helping me kick off the event, always happy to have a customer on. Turkey Gertenbach, who's the global B2B engineering lead at AB InBev, a local customer here. Turkey, thanks so much for joining us. Thanks, thanks for being here, sir. All right, so sure. nothing better than getting together with a bunch of your peers, you know, downtown New York City, talk about, uh, you know, some cool technology. Before we get into the tech, though, I, I think most people understand AB InBev, you know, global beverage brand, uh, really well known. I know I saw beer trucks uh, when I was making my way uh, through New York City. Um, but tell us a little bit about kind of the company and your role inside it. Yeah, sure. So, um, so yeah, we're a global com beer company, we sell beer. Um, my main focus is engineering lead at AB InBev, and we look at specifically at the e-commerce um, side of it, so the, the sale, the digital sales. Um, we've been going through a large transformation this last couple of years where we move from more traditional sales to like um, uh, uh, digital sales and we've been implementing our e-commerce platform in a couple of countries this last couple of years. It, so transformation, it's not just that AB InBev goes from a couple of the largest known brands uh, you know, in the beverage to, oh boy, now there's so many different micro beers and different things. Um, I, I know I can't keep up with all the locals, but no. even a, a large, uh, l large brewer like, like like your company has all the little brands. Uh, a similar thing, I guess, is happening on the technology side. Yeah. Uh, yeah uh, maybe tell us a little bit about you know what 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 that transformation. You know what's causing that transformation, and what is happening inside your org to support the, those transformations. Yeah, sure. So when we started with the digital transformation, obviously it was much simpler. We had a couple of applications and. So only one or two countries, and in this last two years we've been expanding and we've been implementing it in all the countries, and, and we've we've started moving from a, a monolithic to a, a, a more microservice central. Um, so obviously it's like not only one application now; it's like this hundreds and, and of your applications. Um, in the beginning, that was that was quite tough um, because we we were moving like we were developing stuff much more quicker than what we could support, and. That's when we started talking to New Relic, um, and, and we looked at their product and see if we, we were looking at a couple of ways of like streamlining this, um, just operational and, and having more visibility on our product as, uh, overall. Um, like we, there's, a, there's still a lot of like we are still immature in a lot of spaces. Um, yeah. So. Talk, bring us in, you talked about your applications, you know, lots, so many customers are going from their monoliths to their microservices, but they usually have, you know, that, that transition is not something that's done overnight, and they need to be able to manage all of that environment. Give us a little bit of uh, a view into, you know, what you can about your application portfolio, where you are in that journey, and then, you know, what tool sets are you using uh, to be able to manage, monitor, and, you know, th the word of the day, of course, is observability. So, yes. you know, what that, that means to you and your org. Yeah, sure. So, um, so like I said, we, we transferred to, to microservices, which is in, on a Kubernetes. Um, there's, there's a lot of different applications that's running, and the, the main thing that we struggled with is like just having visibility on, on infrastructure as well as application performance and just application whether it's up or, or not. Um, so that was the most basic. Um, we, we got New Relic involved and, and that's one of the main tools that we use for observability today. Um, we were using a couple more but we, we are like putting everything into one bucket now. Um, so it's, it's interesting the new stuff that what they announced today, that's, the, that's some of the stuff that we've been missing that's really going to help us. Um, especially the, the database monitoring and the network monitoring. Um, that's something, so all our stuff is on Azure, so we rely a lot on, on, on Azure monitoring, but it doesn't really always give you that granularity of, of like, um, of like uh, observability. Um, one of the other things that we're excited about is the, um, the uh, what's the other thing? Sorry, I forgot, I'll, I'll come back to that. It's <laughs> all right, so first of all, uh, you know, are you using New Relic 1? Uh, for, 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 from New we're Relic? We're starting to use it okay. now, so we still... Yeah, we, so what, what, walk us through a little bit the, the, the journey with New Relic. What, what products were you using and 
tell us what where you are with the platform and okay. what you think of the vision of, as Lou said, it's a capital P platform and certain characteristics that New Relic built uh, when they had in mind. Okay, yeah, sure. So, so in the beginning we were using the, the browse functionality, just like normal looking at whether a website is up or down. And then we started clicking, so, so we've got APM running on every single server that we've got now. Um, that gives us like a lot of visibility, and we use the insights a lot, so just dashboard. Um, the, what, what we found in a new, the new one platform is the, the dashboards that we can create, like the linear of data and visibility that we can give to our stakeholders. It's, it's much better. Um, uh, just the visibility on, on different, I mean, I can, I can give you a couple of use cases that we've gone through in this last couple of weeks. So for example, um, on one of our applications, we're having like login failures, a lot of login failures. And we, we we're really struggling to look at locks and stuff and just pinpointing this down. So on our, like all the data that's coming into New Relic, we started creating dashboards where we can actually see like what's the different causes of these login failures and we can actually pinpoint like where, where do we need to put our focus. Um, so that was a good example. And then the, the other nice thing that I like about the one that, that we are using like actively is the, the Kubernetes um, uh, monitoring. It gives you like visibility of your entire cluster, every single pod that's on there, and, and you can just like quickly see if there's a pod that's, that's struggling or not. All right, uh, if, if you can, I was wondering if you could Bring us inside your Kubernetes. How long have you been using it? You know, do you build your own, or are you using one of the cloud or some other uh, solutions? Tell us a little yeah. bit about your stack and okay. you know what 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 that solution and where, where New Relic fits into it. Yeah, we started with the Kubernetes about just over a year ago. Um, we're using Azure AKS, um, so all our stuff is in, is, is in, is in Azure, and. Um, so yeah, in the beginning, it's it's like we, we built all the applications and everything ourselves. So it's it's all hosted. Um, and again, just coming back to like monitoring within Kubernetes, it's all control uh, like command line, and it's it's difficult to have clear visibility. Um, so yeah, so then when they brought out the, the Kubernetes in like monitoring, that 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 was like a life changer for us. Um, it's it's just operations like we we're, we're being more, more much more proactive now. Um, in terms of like if, if, there's, if, if we need to like scale up um, and whether our ports are healthy or not. So uh, yeah, that, that definitely helps a lot. Um, another thing that, that we've been working with is, is just the, the DevOps, uh, like part of like, it's, we're very new in, in DevOps and just the visibility that, that New Relic gives us helps us a lot in like pinpointing where we need to focus our DevOps efforts. Um, so that's, that's also a good help. Okay, uh, you, you'd mentioned that there were some things announced that uh, had you excited, things that you've been looking for. Maybe, maybe you can I explain, you know, wh which items kind of jumped off the board at you uh, this morning. Yeah, so, um, so again, this, the, the database monitoring and the, um, and, uh, the network traffic, that's, that's very important. Um, and then the one thing that's, and, and this is actually, we, we were just busy investigating uh, lock analyzer and uh, the lock ingestion that they, that they announced today, that's, that's very exciting. So, I mean, we're already in New Relic, so I think we're definitely going to look at that. That's, that's going to be a big help. And then it just brings all our data together. I mean, we don't have to use different tools to, for, for locks and monitoring. And, and yeah, that's, that's something that makes us very excited. And another thing is like we also use SAP a lot in, in for ERP and, and the partnership that, that New Relic is starting with SAP. Now that's, that's also very exciting, something I'm seeing forward to. Okay. Uh, was there anything you were hoping for that you haven't seen yet, or anything on your wish list that you want from either New Relic or you know from Azure or the, the industry as a whole? Yeah. Nothing yet. I, I mean, I, I think, like I said, we're still early stages. I think maybe in the next year or so, we're probably going to start saying, hey guys, maybe you need to build this as well. But for now, it's just like they, they keep delivering stuff that before we can have you even think about it. So that, that's great. Uh, Turkey, it's your first year coming to Future Stack. What what specifically brought you here? What are you hoping to get out of the day? Yeah, it's my first time here. Um, hopefully, I'll, I'll come. Like I said, uh, I've, I've only got a couple of hours today, but I think just just in terms of seeing the new stuff that, that can help us really in our operations, our business operations, and as well as DevOps, it's it's exciting to see how this can transform our business um, going forward. Um, uh, in terms of like what else I want to see, uh, I, I don't, I don't have high expectations at this stage. So I mean, like I said again, they they keep delivering before we can actually say what we want. So that's okay. just great. Um, you mentioned that you're early in kind of your DevOps journey inside the company. Uh, any other color you want to share about just kind of organizationally, what's changing in your business? Uh, you know, we, we, there's so many new things coming on. You know, you launched Kubernetes a year ago. You're getting into logging. Um, you know, so. 
the roles and responsibilities that your team members have in keeping up with all of these various technologies. Yeah. How's that impacting uh, you know, the, the, the workforce and the jobs that they do? Yeah, that's, that's a great. So again, on our, on our services that we've got, like, we've got a lot of new teams as well and, and we've been in a, in a kind of a hyper growth stage. So, and we're building a lot of microservices stuff and we, we struggle to like know whether the performance of that microservice is good enough or not. So um, that's one thing that our developers struggle with and, and that's something that, that New Relic has also helped us with. Like every single service that we built, we, we put it on, on New Relic and we've got a, like you can see like 30 days ago, what has been the average performance of this API. And that helps us also to tie it back to our SLA. So we've got, we've got SLAs for each of our services. Um, for our API endpoints and, and this gives us an easy way to see whether we're on track or not and, and it, it then translates back to the developer on whether they need to, to do something to increase that. Um, another, another great thing that, that we've been doing with New Relic with the um, VP of, of engineering um, is they've been helping us a lot in like setting up our site reliability teams. So we've, we've had a couple of discussions with them this last couple of weeks and um, they've helped us a lot in like just identifying what's the what's the different teams that we need to bring bring to our organization to keep keep um, like keep operating in this, the way and the growth that we are. Um, also, something that's that's great that we've that we've been looking at and, and New Relic has also helped us a lot there is the um, we we had we had a lot of monitoring like we are we monitoring everything but the data doesn't we don't make a lot of use with the data. So what we started doing now is to say, okay, what's the what's the most critical path on our on our application? Like, what does a customer needs to to do? What's the journey he needs to, go to to get his beer at the end of the day? And that's our most critical. So then we went and, and we worked with New Relic to say that, okay, guys, so help us map this to to what's the what's the infrastructure? What's the application that needs to be up to support this journey? And we created like um, thresholds and and on that and, and alerting. So and we've now we're almost at a place now where we've got all the stuff like mapped and alerted and like proper actions on that, um, which is which is also great. That's helping us to be pr more proactive and, and we rely less and less on our customers to, to tell us, hey, there's a problem on the application. All right, uh, the, 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 Lou was talking about all the applications that can be built on top of this platform. I saw the network flows. Do we think we're going to see the beer flows uh, by, by the time we come back a year yeah, from no, now? Yeah, the, the network flows is great. So I, I need to do a little bit more deep dive onto the, onto the application build, but I, I can, I can I can start thinking of a couple of examples where we can really use that um, to, to dip a little bit deeper into, into what, what the data that we've got there today. So yeah, that's, that's also an exciting feature. Well, Turkey Kurtenbach, thank you so much for sharing uh, what your group's going through at InBev. Thanks so much for joining us. Great, thank you, Stu. All right, and uh, lots more coverage here at New Relic Future Stack in New York City. I'm Stu Miniman, and thanks for watching theCUBE.